Bajo and Namaskar. Morphing Machines is a silicon and software IP company based in Bangalore in India. Today I shall tell you the story of uh, Redefined from Morphing Machines. Do you know that your uh, smartphone uses more energy than your refrigerator? And that two internet searches use enough energy to make a cup of tea? Today we use uh, 1500 terawatt hours a year to power information and communication technology on the planet. This uh, could very well double within the next 10 years, and over a half of this energy is used by processors. Processors in our uh, devices today are you know, more powerful than ever, but user applications are becoming mere user interfaces to humongous software applications running on the backend servers and the data centers. The data center itself is a huge maze of you know, CPUs, GPUs, uh, disks, and networks, and so on. So, a single multi-core uh, CPU or a GPU could burn 100 watts. We are talking about billions of these processors all over the place. And uh, most of these are powered on uh, pretty much 24 by 7. So how did uh, you know, high-performance computing or high-performance processors land in this kind of a situation? So there are two canonical ways of uh, HPC that are prevalent. First, parallel computing. So independent subtasks of a computation are executed concurrently, as done in multi-thread software running on CPUs or GPUs. Second, uh, custom hardware acceleration. So results that could, be, uh, that could require executing a couple of thousands of instructions on a general purpose processor could be produced uh, much faster by custom silicon designs um, meant for that purpose. So uh, things like algorithmic performance on uh, specific applications of interest ability to customize and specialize uh, compute capacity to particular application needs, minimizing power usage, uh, these things receive much lower priority than they should. Each of the four major categories of compute platforms uh, today suffer from uh, major limitations in multiple ways. And there is an urgent need, uh, we believe, uh, for a new process architecture to rescue HPC from this blind alley. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Redefine, a reconfigurable massively parallel process architecture for uh, extreme high performance computing on uh, system on chip solutions. <coughs> Redefine uh, supports multi level power management. It scales from 64 to 4K processors on a single uh, SOC. It supports uh, custom hardware acceleration and it reconfigures uh, compute capacity dynamically to suit exactly the the uh, needs of the, the acceleration, com the compute kernel structures in the application currently executing and is done at runtime dynamically. This is how Redefine uh, looks like in a schematic manner. And uh, as you can see, the massive parallelism is quite evident. And the customizability of Redefine comes from uh, having custom function units which can be embedded inside the processor cores. The scalability is huge, as I mentioned already, and the reconfigurability comes from orchestration by uh, compiler or orchestrated execution of application substructures on the fabric dynamically on a runtime basis. So powered by uh, parallelizing compiler technology, which is specific to Redefine, Redefine performs superbly on applications of all kinds, which in involve uh, extremely computer intensive applications. And a few of those which we are interested in right now, uh, together with our customers, are some of the things that you see on the top of this list. The market for uh, reconfigurable and many core processors uh, will be over $10 billion by 2020. And I'm very happy to tell you that right here in Paris, uh, one of our most important global international customers is busy exploring how Redefine could make a big difference in mission critical avionics applications. We are uh, raring to go forward. I mean, we are a semiconductor company. We have not made a chip yet, and we are raring to go forward to make the first redefined prototype ASIC within a year from now. This is where uh, redefined is going to go. And, uh, you know, the uh, quest for redefine brought together a group of veteran computer scientists, uh, computer architecture researchers, software researchers, and entrepreneurs like ourselves, together with some of India's brightest young uh, graduate students in computing at the Indian Institute of Science at Bangalore. And this is what we are going to do together today. Our mission is to be the world's top provider of customizable, reconfigurable, and scalable, massively parallel processor technology in the world. It will apply for both high performance as well as uh, embedded computing. 
and that's what Redefine is all about. Thank you very much. You're, you were talking about legacy systems that uh, you said were difficult to recode, mm -hmm. and so that this could actually solve the problem. Is it? Could you just explain a little bit? Do you need to go into multi-core programming um, to be you, to use your processor, or how does it work with the software layer, basically? I'll take you back to this. So one of the things which uh, I mentioned already earlier, that one of the things that nobody wants to do is uh, to rewrite things that already work, existing code. And one of the reasons why, uh, well, GPUs suffer from two kinds of problems. Redefine is the closest comparable thing to the GPUs, although the architecture is very different. GPUs are shared memory architectures. Redefine is a message passing architecture. It works based on network on chip, and all communication happens over the network. There is no shared memory in the, in the Redefine uh, processor. The, Major problem with GPUs are two. One is, of course, the power, which is killing everybody. I mean, it's killing the planet. Secondly, uh, it requires complete recoding of the existing applications. So if today we have a C uh, program application which runs on existing processors, if you want that ported to the GPU, you rewrite that in CUDA or in OpenCL or some such, and that requires uh, significant re-engineering. The same thing holds good for FPGA-based solutions or other solutions. In case of Redefined, the Redefined compiler works in two different ways. So we are now working on how the parallel programming model is going to get, look like in the Redefine uh, compiler. But right now the Redefine compiler takes sequential code. It will take existing sequential C code and then create the necessary parallelism that are, that are inherent in that code and then convert that into the way of execution that you saw in this picture over here. So the reason that this works is that uh, there is a lot of fine grain uh, you know, instruction level and task level parallelisms evident in even existing C code. And even without doing a single line of code rewriting, it is possible to extract that parallelism and make it manifest on the platform that which it's going to execute. So it's by compiling differently? Yes. So that, that's the beauty of the Redefine uh, compiler. It's a parallelizing compiler. It's based on the LLVM inf infrastructure and then builds special optimizing uh, layers in the optimization uh, middle layer and uh, introduces the restructuring of the application for uh, concurrent execution at runtime. And this entire thing is dynamic. So another way of looking at this would be to think about um, comparing Redefine with, well, I wouldn't take a name, but you could think about the typical SMP multi-core processors that you know today, which are there in all our uh, devices. So they have a fewer number of cores and uh, much larger granularity cores. And that the way, I mean, what we're trying to show in this picture is that by means of being able to create these virtual cores which are dynamically formed at runtime to allocate to a particular subtest to be executed, we're able to create dynamic, heterogeneous virtual cores on the fly and give them away when they are no longer required. So the same execution scenario with, let us say, seven subtests as seen in this picture might look something like this. And the other handicap here is that, you know, although a subtest might be very small and it could require a very little amount of resource out of this huge code on which it's executing, but you are actually burning power in a, in a large part of this, uh, the remaining part of the co processor code. So in our case, we not only uh, are able to pack tasks more nicely into the execution fabric, we are also able to do very, very aggressive power management because anything that is not used on the fabric at any instant can be instantaneously powered down. 